Oh, we have reached Thunder Bay, filling up our tank and then heading towards Ignace. And on the way, we'll have to pray for Jesh. It's what? Minus 18? It's minus 18. We continued our journey towards Kenora, but shortly after an hour, we took a quick break at Uppsala, Ontario for Fajr prayer. After that, we took a stop at Ignace, Ontario, where we took gas and also switched driver. From here, I started driving, but earlier, I switched driving at Nipigon, Ontario till uh, we reached Ignace, Ontario. We just crossed Ignace and uh, heading towards Kenora, which is about two and a half hour drive from here. And as you can see, it's quite cold, minus 16 plus and it's also snowing. All right, see you at Kenora. Ignace and Dryden, Ontario, most of the highway was covered in heavy snow. Highway lane was not clear and highway border was also not clear. So I had to be quite careful as to making sure there is enough gap between the highway and the sides of the highway. In some sections of the highway, it was fresh snow, a clear sign that the last car or truck that went in this direction was quite a while ago. The drive between Ignace and Dryden was a quiet one as everybody in the SUV was in their deep sleep. This was also in the early morning, so cannot be blamed, but the road condition kept me engaged and alert. A sunny day would have made this drive more scenic, no doubt about it, but very likely at the expense of more traffic. The extreme weather condition made it a tricky one, but mostly a solo drive. That is, it is only our SUV was the only one on the highway or at the direction we were heading. One thing we did not notice, and that is the time zone change. After Thunder Bay, Ontario, we noticed that uh, actually from Uppsala, Ontario, we entered into Central Standard Time. But we realized this change when we were in Kenora, Ontario. Was not aware about this and learned something new in this trip that Ontario two time zones roughly after two hours of drive we reached Dryden Ontario here we took a quick bio break and got recharged with coffee at Tim Hortons after about one and a half hours of driving we were in Kenora around 11:50 in the morning that is central time. The break here was longer. All of us used this stop as our morning wake up and preparation for brunch. Okay, we are in Kenora now. Uh, freshening up. For the first time, we are using our electric lunch box to warm up our food. We are going to pray or start for Winnipeg, get out of Ontario at last. Uh, we are leaving Kenora shortly. 
we will be out of Ontario. We stopped at Clearwater Bay, Ontario after we left Kenora. It was about half an hour drive from Kenora towards Manitoba. Here we stopped for Vohor and Asur prayer break and also to fill up gas. We are now actually in central time. We don't know when we switched into central time. Sometime in early dawn. Uh, surprisingly, when we are in uh, where? I think uh, it, past Thunder Bay, somewhere close to Ignace and Kenora. Uh, our time switched to central time. So we are at 1.21 uh, p.m. and uh, we just uh, refueled left Kenora so and heading towards uh, Winnipeg and uh, it's a uh, hour 36 drive 36 minutes I think it will take us another 15 20 minutes to exit Ontario hoping to stop over and uh, take a picture with uh, welcome to Manitoba last after almost 25 hours of driving 25 or 26 hours of driving we are finally about to exit Ontario must be something because people were taking pictures holding hugging Central time or Eastern time, everything looks messed up. So, yeah, so we are about one hour 19 minutes from Winnipeg. Stopping there for again getting refreshed, maybe refuel. Yeah.
Are you okay? Are you sure? Why don't you, why don't you take this? Now life is coming back. It squeezed out life out of my fingers. Look, <laughs> they so look so dramatic. slim now. Oh. So dramatic. I have caught barehanded at minus 20 in Paris. Even then, it didn't hurt this much. Oh my god, it's so cold outside. Uh, we have reached Brandon in Manitoba. Got some coffee, refueled, prayed Maghreb and Isha. It's uh, 6 p.m. Uh, and we are already on our way to Regina, Saskatchewan. Uh, and we're expecting to reach there around 9.40. So it's roughly three and a half hour drive. And after that, We are now taking a dinner break in front of Tim Hortons Co-op gas station and then heading to Regina. Four hours later we reached Regina, Saskatchewan and stopped in a McDonald's around 9.30 p.m. Here we freshened up and switched to drivers. From here on I went to hibernation for the next few hours. From Regina to Swift Current, Saskatchewan, we took a stop, a quick stop, and then to Medicine Hat, Alberta. In total, this section is about five hours drive. My wife took over the driving for this stretch of the journey. Few points or observations while driving through Manitoba and Saskatchewan. The whole stretch of the highway from Manitoba to Calgary has a speed limit of 110 kilometers. Because of this, our journey time was shaved off by four hours. We saw about 30 plus minutes of savings from our expected travel time between stops in Manitoba, Saskatchewan and Alberta. There are several signs and warnings along the stretch of the highway starting from Sault Ste. Marie all the way to Calgary uh, about moose and deers. It would, these signs would also mention for how many kilometers you need to be careful. So we always looked for these signs and tried to be extra vigilant during that section of the drive. Though the speed limit in Manitoba, Saskatchewan and Alberta in most of the section is 110 kilometers, there are several intersections where the speed suddenly drops down from 100 to 90 to 80 kilometers. So it would be ideal to keep a lookout for these signs. Some of these intersections do have busy traffic. In some intersections, there are traffic lights and you would require to stop. Thankfully, these intersections have amber light board at a 90 km speed reduction signpost indicating the traffic light will turn red. So it gives the driver ample time and distance to slow down to come to a full stop. 
I was not able to set up my dash cam properly for loop recording. That is why most of the drive from Ontario to Manitoba were not recorded. I was able to figure this out while in Saskatchewan, but it was already dark. That is why some of these scenarios of intersection and speed limit and uh, traffic light on the highway I was not able to record and share with you. From Sault Ste. Marie till Kenora, we were in the temperature of minus 20 degrees Celsius, which feels like roughly about minus 25 degrees Celsius. But in Manitoba to Calgary, we were in minus 25 degree plus Celsius, which feels like in the zone of minus 30 degrees Celsius. After leaving Brandon, Manitoba, in my Kia Telluride, I noticed an anomaly in the behavior of the L2 autonomous driving, which is also known as adaptive cruise control with lane guidance. Normally, during snow, slush, and ice effect of the driving, the residues from the road would block the front radar which in turn will disable the L2 autonomous feature and of course you will also see that warning on your instrument cluster and this is a normal behavior in a bad weather situation during our stop in brandon i did notice that the front radar was covered in snow and ice instead of cleaning it properly I used my boot to scrape off these residues as much as possible. Some were still there and the leftover snow and ice resulted in faulty behavior and detection by the radar. The radar failed to detect the vehicle ahead in the same lane and many a times failed to detect the trucks because of their backlighting in the dark and in most cases was able to detect car and SUV but the radar detected the front vehicle at a very close distance but not at an expected distance set by me in the cluster most of the time it detected the next lane vehicle as a ahead vehicle and engaged the brake to slow down even though there is no vehicle ahead in its own lane once I was sure that this is a consistent behavior I disabled adaptive cruise control and engaged normal cruise control so this is something for the driver to remember who has these features in their vehicle that in bad weather and bad driving condition or road condition uh, one cannot rely on these features and must be aware of how the car is behaving and do the driving accordingly thankfully in the next stop i cleaned the radar area properly and it worked fine this was a new experience and something to remember and an experience that very likely I would not have encountered if I was driving within Ontario where the temperature doesn't get as cold as Manitoba, Saskatchewan and Alberta and the drive is not as long and therefore one gets ample opportunity to do the cleaning uh, to get rid of the uh, alarm from the radar.
From Regina, Saskatchewan, we drove for about three hours to reach Swift Current, Saskatchewan. We were here around 12.30 a.m. Central Time. Since everybody was sleeping and our driver was still active and vigilant, we decided to move forward without a rest. We did park for a few minutes to evaluate our situation before we went ahead. We continued our travel to Medicine Hat, Alberta with my wife in the driver's seat. In this stretch of the drive, we moved over to Mountain Standard Time. Roughly around 2 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, we reached Medicine Hat, Alberta. Here we switched drivers and I took over for the last section of the drive, which will take us to Calgary, our destination. This stretch of the drive from Toronto to Calgary was a direct drive without any overnight stopover. Before embarking on this trip, I did my research reading travel blogs and YouTube videos of fellow travelers who also did the same trip. All these resources helped me immensely to mentally prepare as well as to get ready logistically but none of the travelers did this kind of non-stop driving as I would like to say in my case which is no overnight breaks for this reason I was not prepared to find out that most of the facilities I would say 99% of the facilities on the Trans Canada Highway from Sault Ste. Marie to Calgary starts to close their business from around 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. and they start to open again the following day at 5 a.m. onwards. 
if one does not prepare and plan accordingly it will become challenging for many scenarios to a point of extreme situation for gas washroom and food thankfully i was prepared with extra 25 liter of gas our food stock was set up in such a way taking into account for a worst case situation of two days emergency if stranded in snow or blizzard with the option of propane heating the only challenge was washroom access in this frigid cold weather thankfully we always looked ahead at the preferred facilities and their business hours in Google map before we started our journey for the next stop this helped us to plan and prepare accordingly from stop to stop
We reached Calgary around 5 a.m. mountain time. Before heading to our destination, we decided to fill up our gas and also take a much needed car wash. For the last 45 hours, Kia Telluride took a good beating of the weather and the road conditions. We started our journey from Toronto on the 20th December at 11.30 a.m and reached Calgary on the 22nd December around 5.25 a.m. mountain time. That would make it 7.25 Ontario time, Eastern time. With breaks, my estimated time to reach Calgary was roughly around 9 a.m. in the morning Calgary time. My planning did not take into account the 110 km speed limit from Manitoba to Alberta which uh, helped us to shave off few hours for, from our planned timeline. Alhamdulillah we reached our destination safe and sound ahead of time giving us ample opportunity to hit the bed and get a good sleep. In the next part of the video will share the winter experience of our visit to Lake Louis and Banff. Barakallah fikum and thanks for watching.